Excellent news, Claudia. I now have a name. Manuel Paleologos. Nephew of the deposed Byzantine Emperor Constantine. I have few doubts that he is the man leading the Templars. My task now is to interrogate a traitorous janissary named Tarek Barletti and find the location of the Templars' army. Until then, Sophia and I will continue our search for the one key that remains hidden. With every passing moment, I know my chances grow slimmer. And yet I cannot help but linger some days to stay an extra hour with her. To hear her voice and watch her face animate with joy as she speaks of the things that move her. Her books, her city, her memories. I cannot help but think what a shame it will be when I find the final key. Sequence six, Fortune's Disfavor. Sounds like Ezio's really taken with Miss Sophia. We can turn around and make our way to our first quest. That's not a legal move. It is a European variation. Arocco. It's interesting, but not exactly fair when you play by different rules than your opponent. You may think differently when you are Sultan. Shall I take it back? Suleiman, I know it has been hard on you watching your father and me quarrel over Bayezid's throne. Grandfather has chosen you, and his word is canon. What is there to argue about? Your father and I were close once, but his cruelty and ambition have made... I have heard the rumors, uncle. Well, I have a meeting with the vizier soon. Shall we continue another time? Whenever you like. Ezio! Tarek has been selling guns to a local miser, Manuel Paleologos. Paleologos? That is a sad sound. The last Byzantine emperor was Constantine Paleologos. If his heir is arming a militia of some kind, this conflict will escalate. Tarek knows where the rifles are headed. If I find him first, I can follow the weapons straight to the Byzantines. He will be with his Janissaries in their barracks. So if you want to get close, you will have to be one yourself. Not a problem. Guzel. Get the information you need. Then kill him. Are you sure? You told me Tarek and your father were close friends, Suleiman. This is true, but such naked treason against my grandfather deserves death. In Daisy. Into the shadows, Ezio wants to interrogate Tariq for the location of the Templar army. To get close to Tariq, acquire a Janissary disguise. After a while, we reach the area that the Janissary is in. First thing we should do is kill this guard. The Janissary should be isolated, so this shouldn't be an issue. We can just kill him while he harasses these citizens. It does appear that we need to place his body inside of a haystack. And there's one right close by, so that's where we'll go. Oh, we were spotted. But apparently it doesn't matter. Honor lost and won. Follow the Janissaries to their compound and locate Tariq. 
to uh, learn where he has sent the weapons purchased by Manuel. Be careful, your disguise is not perfect. For full sync, we can perform an air assassination on Tariq. Yeah, um, I would assume it's not perfect, our disguise here. It has a big hole in it from where I stabbed this guy. Selim understands our plight. The Byzantines, the Mamluks, the Safavid. Only he has the courage to face these threats. But listen, Selim is a warrior, like Osman and Mehmet. So why has our Sultan chosen a cat over our life? Ahmed shares the Sultan's calm temperament. The Janissaries they have are dedicated too much alike, their lives to the protection of the Empire. Return the favor and find this killer before he strikes again. Woe betide the murderer who took the life of a beloved Janissary. This enemy of civilization must be found and... They're talking about us, but it's not the first one, so I'm not sure. If he's talking about the guy that we're disguised as, or somebody else. Go on, get out! Yes, Eklar Olsen! Shame on your Chakla! Salamun Aleikum, O sublime conquerors! Get out of here, you annoying person! Why does Ahmed linger in the city? He knows he's not wanted. He is like a moth, hovering around an open flame, waiting for his father to perish, so that he may step to the throne. Did you hear he offered Tarek a sum of money in exchange for our loyalty? God damn! What did Tarek do? Kardesh Larim! One of our own was found murdered and stripped of his garments not an hour ago. His body dumped like a mound of rubbish. Keep a close watch on these streets as you move about. Someone is planning to strike in our name. We must be ready. Sultan Bayezid is a good man and a kind Sultan, but he has lost the fire that made him great. No, no, he's still a fighter. Look at the army he has raised against Salim. This is further evidence of his decline to take up arms against his own son? Shameful. Do not bend the truth to match the contours of your passion. It was Salim who attacked our Sultan. Evet, Evet, but Salim did this so for the glory of the Empire, not himself. So if we remember uh, Ezio's song days, we know that he uh, is not proficient in the language, so he can't speak very much here, if at all, besides that he has an accent, so this is going to make it even tougher for him to blend in with everyone else. The guards take notice of us almost immediately. That's not good, so we'll have to move quickly to continue with these hiding places. And we're caught. Selim's forces have fallen back to Varna. Heavy losses, I'm told. So, between last time when we desynced, and now, it's been about 
I don't know, five to seven tries. Um, but this is the one where we succeed. And I'm not being sarcastic about it. I, I think that we get through this one. Tarek, a message for you. Now it's time to assassinate Tarek. For his treason. The rifles have arrived in Cappadoce, where Manuel has garrisoned his army. And our men? Are they still with him? Evet. They will contact us when the Byzantines decamp. Then we will meet them when they reach Bursa. Everything is falling into place, Effendim. Evet. For once. Now it is time to assassinate Tarek for his treason. Perhaps if we hang out with these Janissary for long enough, we can find our opportunity. We gotta get out of here quickly. Is this the result of Suleiman's investigation? You collude with the Sultan's enemies. What did you expect would come of such treachery? I blame myself. Not for treason, but hubris. I was preparing an ambush. Preparing to strike the Byzantine Templars where they felt safest. What proof do you have of this? Uh, see, here. This will lead you to the Byzantines in Cappadoce. Destroy them if you can. You have done well, Tarek. Forgive me. Protect my homeland, assassin. Allah Ashkina. Redeem the honor we have lost in this fight. Oh man. I agree. I am getting tired of this uniform. Yeah, we gotta get out of that, but. Ugh, geez, Tarek. He was planning an ambush to get rid of our enemy. He was doing our job for us, but he was doing his job so well hiding it that it seemed like he was the bad guy. Gosh. All right. Well, anyways, like I said, we have to get out of here and that get this be uniform easy. off. We get away and receive the database entry of Rose Mosque. Originally named Hegia Theodosia, for a woman martyred during a brief but violent period of orthodox iconoclasm in the 8th century, Rose Mosque or Gul Kamiai acquired its new name after a tragic, though rather poetic, set of events. On the eve of the final day of the Ottoman siege of Constantinople, Legend holds that Emperor Constantine the Eleventh and the Orthodox Patriarch of the city held their final vigil here praying for a miracle to deliver them from almost certain death. When the time came for the Emperor to lead his final defense, many hundred people remained in the church, adorning it with rose petals and chanting endless prayers for their safety. The next day, the Ottomans broke through the walls and the city fell. When Sultan Mehmet's army reached Hegia Theodosia, they found it littered with rose petals and filled with heavy-hearted citizens. 
All who had remained were taken prisoner, and the church was converted for general military purposes. Some two decades later, the Ottomans repaired the structure for use as a place of worship, calling it Rose Mosque in remembrance of its final days as a Christian church. Now I think we should lay low for a little bit, get some of this notoriety away from us, and visit Sophia. Perhaps helping her will ease our mind from killing an innocent man. Excuse for such a recklessness. Enjoying the poem? Who are these men he condemned to hell? Political opponents. Men who wronged him. Alighieri's quill cuts deeply, no? See, si. It is a subtle way to seek revenge. Ezio, I plan to make a trip to Andrianopoli in a few weeks to visit a new printing press there. And that should be fun. It is a five or six day ride from here, and I will need an escort. Prego. Oh, I'm sorry, you are a busy man. Sophia, I would love to accompany you, but my time is running short. That is true for all of us. Well, I can try to solve this last code now, but I need to run an errand before sundown. Can you wait a day? What do you need? It is silly, but a bouquet of fresh flowers. White tulips, specifically. I can get you the flowers. Nessun problema. Are you sure? It will be a nice change of pace. Bene. Meet me in the park east of Aya Sofia, and we will trade. Flowers for information. A little errand. Run an errand for Sophia while she locates the final polo clue. This might be no problem if we weren't one of the most wanted people in Constantinople at the moment. Let's see if we can drop that notoriety while we head to the florist. You look like a man with money to spend. What do you need, Dostum? Tulips. White, if you have them. Ah, tulips. Uh, forgive me, but I am fresh out. Uh, something else, perhaps? It is not my call, unfortunately. All right. Listen, I may know where to get fresh tulips. You wait here, and I will return. One hour. Two at most. I am not waiting an hour. Yeah, I wouldn't wait that long either. And I don't think he could with that notoriety. Um, however, the blind guy catches us like three times. So in loading, my notoriety goes away. So we'll skip a little bit here. Isn't that dangerous? All right, so we should be pretty close now. Oh. Crap, did you see all those up on the, the mini-map there? Did they pop up? <laughs> There's like a lot of these. Um, these are the white bushes, I would think. Yep, and these are the ones that I jump into all the time.
Then he shoves them in his jacket, only to be crushed. All right, let's go deliver these flowers to the lovely Sophia. What is this? A gift. Sit. Che belli, grazie. I wanted to thank you for letting me play a small role in your adventure. A small role is enough for this adventure, believe me. <laughs> you are a mystery, et auditore. Mi dispiace. I do not mean to be. It is fine. È affascinante. Sembra squisito. Why, thank you. Any luck with the final code? Ah, the code, see. Si. I solved it many hours ago. You will get it soon enough. Yeah, yeah, you know what she wanted. I don't know, girl. He's a bit old for you. I guess there's nothing really, really wrong with that. It's not unheard of. But, uh, I don't know, you know, it's nice to have not too much of an age gap. I mean, she's basically a millennial. He's like a, a boomer. Yeah, let's get them and have money. We're going to need it to, uh, show that that lady that we can we can take care of her we can provide for her all right enough of all that let's go let's move on all right looks like she gave us our clue Signs and Symbols Part 3. Niccolo Polo has hit a book near little Hagia Sophia containing clues to a Masiaf Keys location. Use the Polo symbols to reveal it. And there it is. Aesop's Fables by Socrates has been found. And then we unlock the Maiden Tower, which I suppose we should go and visit. Finally, we make it to the docks to go to the Maiden Tower. The Maiden's Tower. A clue left behind by the Polos has brought Ezio to the Maiden's Tower. Investigate the tower, but be careful. For full sync, we are not to fall into any water. And of course, a database entry for the Maiden's Tower. Tis Kulesi, the Maiden's Tower. Known erroneously as Leander's Tower, has served many functions since its construction in 1110. Initially a naval control tower, it has been used also as a lighthouse, a semaphore station, a quarantine post, a custom station, a home for retired naval officers, and a restaurant. 
the origin of its name stems from a hundred of desperate myths. The most common and recent of which concerns a sultan and his beloved daughter. According to legend, the sultan was told by an adamant oracle that his daughter was destined to be killed by a venomous snake on her 18th birthday. Determined to deflect the barbs of fate, the sultan built the maiden's tower for the exclusive purpose of keeping his beloved daughter away from land and all things that crawled upon it. After the tower's completion, the girl moved in and remained there until the appointed day. On the evening of his daughter's 18th birthday, the sultan was overjoyed that he had prevented the oracle's prediction, and so traveled to see her, bearing a basket of exotic fruits to present as a gift. When his daughter picked through the cornucopia, however, she was immediately bitten by a poisonous asp that had stowed away amid the colorful fruits. The sultan's daughter died in her father's arms right on schedule. Well, that's sad. Um, if you didn't know, a semaphore station is a station that sends and receives signals or messages, rather. But, let us continue on. What do we have here? I feel like all these landmarks with assassin stuff and Templar stuff, I, I, it's fun, okay, like, I get it, but it would be much more inconspicuous if it was just in some person's house.
four of five keys, baby! And yeah, I fell into the water. I just deleted that scene. They say he screams in his sleep, calling out for his father. A boss? What a miserable man. It is not our place to judge. It certainly is. If our master has gone mad, I would like to know. Shh. Good evening. Water. Of course. Sit. <clears throat> Many thanks. What brings you here, old man? Pity, Abbas. Do not mock him. He has lived as an orphan for most of his life, shamed by his family's legacy. He is desperate for power, because he is powerless. He is our mentor, and unlike Al-Mu'alim or Al-Tair, he never betrayed us. Nonsense. Al-Tair was no traitor. He was driven out, unjustly. Ugh. Is it? Is it you? I heard the rumors, but I did not believe them. I wonder if I might speak to Abbas myself. It's been a long time. Impossible. Abbas uses rogue Fedayin to keep us from the castle. Fewer than half the fighters here are true assassins. So, where do I begin? With us. The Mentor's return. Altair has returned to Masyaf after two decades of self-imposed exile. Gather allies and eliminate Abbas. Do not kill anyone except Abbas and his captains for Bullsink. You say these men are cruel. Has anyone raised his blade against an innocent? Alas, yes. Brutality seems to be their sole joy. Then they will die, for they have compromised the order. But those who still live by the creed must be spared. You can trust in us. No, no. Altair. What about? People say an old assassin saved the life of a merchant down the valley. They say he fought with a hidden blade. Ah, rumors. I don't believe it. True or not, say nothing to Abbas. He is sick with paranoia. Even the people here talk in hushed tones about Abbas being paranoid. Awaiting for our return, perhaps. Let's get to his captains. Oh, we tire easily. Altair is an old man now, after all. You make me ill, just look. An easy kill. They don't suspect us at all. In the village? Send word to the castle quickly. Oh no. Assassins! To me! They're going to the castle. We'll never catch him.
Mentor. Welcome. Shh. We do not want to get him killed. I thought those guys jumped down to kill me. Turns out they are our friend. Kill the traitors! Technically, I didn't kill those guys. So I should be okay. Nothing. You pathetic miser. Stand down or die. Follow me to the castle. And spill no blood if you can help it. Saving those couple of moves that he's got there. He might need them one day. Decades have passed since we last saw you within these walls. We could use your wisdom. Now more than ever. A lot of little red dots in here. Our mentor has returned! Gosh, it's lucky the majority are My respect, like us and aren't loyal to a boss. I fight for you. For the order. Welcome home, Altair. Welcome back, man. Presence on them. You die! Always an honor. Die! Together for victory. Twenty years and it's like a boss hasn't changed at all. Welcome back, mentor. mentor. I mean like in appearance. Tell your men to stand down. No! I am defending Masha. Would you not do the same? You corrupted everything we stand for and lost everything we gained. All of it sacrificed on the altar of your own spite. And you you have wasted your life. Staring into that apple, dreaming of your own glory. That is true, Abbas. I learned many things from the apple. Of life and death. Of the past and the future. Let me show you. I thought he was gonna show him, like, the apple and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. Must have been a 9 mil. I can never forgive you, Altair. The lies you told about my family, my father, the humiliation I suffered. They were not lies, Abbas. I was ten years old when your father came to see me. He was in tears, begging to be forgiven for betraying my family. Then he cut his own throat. I watched his life ebb away at my feet. I will never forget that image. No! But he was not a coward, Abbas. He reclaimed his honor. I hope there is another life after this one. Then I will see him and know the truth of his final days. And when it is your time, we will find you. And then, there will be no doubts.
An old man, and still he fought to hold our brotherhood together. I would have called him stubborn in my youth, but now I can only admire his courage. The assassins were his life, from beginning to end. He had no other. Only one key left to find. We'll have to leave that for another episode, though, as we've run out of time here. I'd like to thank anyone for watching, and a good bye until next time.